All right, welcome into the five to nine hustle. My name is Eric and I'm a part-time reseller. I mostly sell pre-owned men's clothing on sites like eBay, Macari, and Poshmark. If you happen to catch my recent haul video, I scored nine pairs of men's lucky brand jeans and one pair of Carhartt jeans, also men's. Um, and so I'm going to show you how I photograph pants to prepare for listing online. Um, so the photo set up right behind me. I do flat lay. Um, typically my pants will have between six and eight photos, just kind of depends if there's any flaws or unique characteristics to show or how many tags there are and things like that. Uh, but six to eight main photos, pretty quick. And then since I do flat lay and I've already got the thing out on a table, essentially, I go ahead and measure it at the same time and then fold it and bag it for inventory. So we'll show you the first one slowly. And then I'm, after that, I'm going to actually time myself and see how, how quickly, without really pushing myself too hard, just working at a normal pace, how quickly can I get through the next nine, uh, just so you have an idea of what kind of time it takes to prep 10 pairs of pants uh, for listing. So here's our setup. I got my, my phone for pictures. I've got the jeans stacked up. These are all either um, 361 vintage straight or 221 original state, original straight or the two different styles. I actually have them sorted and stacked that way. So the photographs will all be in that order. And then when I'm listing them, it'll be same style, same style, same style, switch, same style. It'll be faster to list rather than going back and forth. But I've got my laptop where I keep um, my measurements and I also record my inventory number there. So I wind up having it in two different places. I use 11 by 14 um, self-sealing bags for pants. I use pre-printed inventory labels, just, you know, stickers with numbers on them. And then my tools of the trade. I've got a washcloth. If uh, something does happen to have dirt or some kind of crust on it, quite, quite frequently just a damp washcloth will get it off. You want a pair of scissors for any stray threads and things like that. Obviously a lint roller and then also a fabric shaver don't use very often on jeans but it's always at my photo table if there's any pilling or i need to freshen up the look of a collar on a shirt or something like that so let's go ahead and get the first pair of jeans over here and take some pictures okay i think the easiest way to show this is just to record right from the phone that i'm photographing with and Got to get everything arranged here. First time, we don't want stuff in our picture. I've not switched to square mode yet, so I usually take pictures in square. Helps cut out that leg there. Um, and this is usually the first picture I take. Uh, a lot of people call this the check mark look. So let's go ahead and get that. I also tend to take photos in Vivid if they don't look um, unusually bad. There we go. Let's get our next shot. And so what I'll do next, uh, since I already have them out flat, is just go ahead and get a picture of the cuffs. And I just do one side of the cuffs. If they're worn or chewed up, um, show the worst side, and then the other side looks better. It's a nice surprise. Okay, up next we have just a picture of the sort of upper half of the jeans boom uh i i have heard people say no one will buy something if they can't see all of it in the picture i've never found this to be true i think we're going to show enough of the the pants that people are comfortable with it i've sold many 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 pairs of pants all right up next we have essentially the same picture but with the fly open this often looks cool if there's any kind of contrast to the pockets. Uh, also just showing that it's a zipper fly or a button fly or whatever it is. And then from this same pose, um, I will get the tags. This one, there's a style tag on this pair, so we'll get that. And then I will get the made in slash content tag. I don't always show it in the listing, but when I am listing, I love having that picture just to remind me, you know, of those details, such as the, the spandex content or, you know, that it was made in China or whatever. Um, 
And now we are on to the back. All right, here we are on the back. Get two more photos over here. Get the butt shot. And then if there's a patch or any kind of tag, go ahead and get a close up of that. All right, now like I said, since you've got it out flat, go ahead and get the measurements. You can use a tailor's tape or a tape measure. I find I'm faster with the tape measure. So the waist measurement is the first one I do. And you just come straight across the waist like this and multiply by two. This is right just over 18. So I'm gonna call it 36. It's tag 36, 34, so that looks perfect. Um, you know, if it's smaller than that, you've got a problem. Quite frequently, they'll be larger. Like this is really closer to 18 and a half. Um, sometimes it'll be a whole inch bigger. And in those cases, I just go ahead and report that it measures uh, what the tag says. I find most people can use the extra inch. Uh, unless it's specifically like a relaxed fit, then I might mention, hey, it says 36, but the waist measures 40 or 38 and a half or whatever it might be, but it's relaxed fit. Inseam is going to go from the end of the cuff all the way up to where everything comes together in the crotch area. And I do try to get that just right on that seam. And don't be shy with giving it a, a little yank so it's nice and straight. And we're right at 32 inches here. Let me see. So I think it was 36, 34. Yeah, we're closer to 33. So in those cases, it's like, did it shrink? Were these hemmed? I'll go ahead and look at the, the cuff and see if it looks like a, a hatchet job or not. Sometimes at home, um, hems look really bad. The thread seems to match the rest though. So I think these may have just shrank a little bit over time. So in that case, I'll list those as 36, 33 rather than 36, 34. And I put all this on my spreadsheet, which I'll show you next. Now, that, those are the only two measurements that I include for men's pants. Waist and inseam, that's how they're sized. That's what men are gonna know. Um, but if you are curious, or if you wanna sell women's pants, you might want more measurements. Um, I'll just show you what they are real quick, just for your info, but I do not include these. So from, from the bottom of the crotch seam up to the top of the waist is the rise. It's 11 inches. And that is an item specific eBay will ask for. Uh, another one that's quite frequent, leg opening. People want to know how wide this is. I think it's really for girls that want to wear boots or something like that. So this is nine across. So we would surmise it's 18 inches around. And then other ones that I've seen are the thigh, which would go kind of from that crotch seam across, the knee, where you're just sort of guessing the middle. And then one other measurement I see a little more infrequently is out seam, similar to in seam, but you're going from the cuff up to the waist on the outside. Uh, those are pretty much all your jean measurements. I get asked for an additional uh, measurement on men's pants maybe once or twice a year and usually it is the leg opening but it's so infrequent um i just i do not see the need to include more than the two measurements on jeans now let's fold these and tag them all right first thing i do is fold them in half uh usually if there's a patch i'll leave that on the outside in case it helps me identify it Later, this thing that sticks out, I, I don't know if there's a name for it or not, crotch piece or whatever, I kind of fold that in. I come up about that far. I come over, I come over again. That's how I do it. Shorter uh, pants, you can just like kind of fold it in half twice, but for most jeans, I find this trifold to be effective. And then quite often this will fit in your padded flat break envelope. Um, you might want to go a little bit smaller if you use the, the normal flat rate envelope that is not padded. 
uh, but I've, I've dipped them in those as well. They go in my 1114 poly bag. We go ahead and get that sealed. And I get an inventory number. That's really one of the main reasons I bag my inventory. Um, one, I do think it's better for storage. I do have a dog and a cat. I don't want hair to get on stuff after I've listed it. Um, but the main thing I like about it is I can put stickers and things on them to help me keep track of stuff. Let's go over to the computer. All right, this should probably be screen recorded on the computer, but whatever. So this is a spreadsheet that I keep. It's like a rolling uh, inventory sheet. First column, I have the same number that I just stuck on the inventory bag, 60. I will add to the front of that a bin letter when I put this in a bin. And then I've got the next few lines filled out because um, the stickers are sequential. And I just put in here, you know, what it is. This is a Lucky Brand, um, 36, 34 is what it's tagged. And they were um, 361 vintage straight blue jeans. I used to put like a, I used to essentially just write my title here. I don't do that as much anymore. Um, and then I have two columns for measurements and with my pants, I know that's the first one is the waist and the next one is the inseam. And recall this one measured a 33 inseam, even though it's tagged 34. And the column with the X's is just, is this listed or not? And that's it. That's, that is my entire system. So I, I have the spreadsheet up when I list. Um, I also have all my photos up when I list. Um, but very important to keep track of stuff, particularly I'm about to take pictures of a lot of pants that look very similar. Um, so I want to make sure when they sell, uh, I'm pulling the right ones to send. And that's, that's what the inventory number is going to do for me. Um, but yeah, two measurements. If it's uh, shirts, I go armpit to armpit and length. And then if uh, they're ties, I'm going width and length. Um, so very nice. All my listings have two measurements and I can keep everything organized on one sheet. All right, now I'm gonna see um, how quickly I can do the next nine, just working at my regular pace. It is 115 on my phone. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. to go. These will get listed and put in a bin. And I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing them in what sold videos very soon. We are done. Came in at 142, started at 115. So that's right at 27 minutes or three minutes per pair. That time lapse was me photoing, measuring, folding, and bagging nine pairs of jeans. Um, so 10 pairs we could feasibly do in half an hour. And then the listing process, particularly with this batch, with nine of them being the same brand and a bunch of them being the same style, the listing will go very fast as well. Um, I, can, I won't be surprised if I can get all 10 listed in half an hour. So um, that's 10 listings, an hour total time, not counting the shopping, obviously.